Well, welcome everybody to Youth at Home. Uh, we're so glad you are tuning in uh, here tonight and you are joining us. My name is Sam. For those of you I have not met, it is great to meet you. Uh, I'm the youth pastor here at Fellowship, and we're super excited that you are tuning in and joining us here tonight. It is no accident that you are tuning in here. Uh, we believe God has something to say and to speak to you. And my encouragement to you would be to invite one friend who is one person uh, who needs some hope and encouragement. Uh, and would you just text them the link madeforfellowship.com slash youth. Uh, we want to get them on here so that God can begin to move and work in their life and they will leave and you will leave uh, more encouraged and hopeful because of tonight. We say this all the time. Uh, we are all Jesus, all people, all seasons. That means you are welcome no matter what. Uh, everyone here is welcome. Uh, and uh, we're super excited for what God is doing here in our midst at Fellowship Youth. Um, let me just give a quick shout out. Uh, to those who I got to see this past weekend uh, at our drive through it was so special uh, to see you and your families, to get to take communion together, to pray with you uh, and pray for you. Uh, what a gift it was, especially during these COVID times, to see you in person. Uh, and I want to invite you to our next in-person gathering as, at Fellowship, uh, which is going to be on Mother's Day. Uh, all the details are on the screen, but we would love for you to join us. Uh, if you feel comfortable, uh, and we are just super excited for for uh, the chance to gather in person uh, in over a year. Pretty wild, uh, what a crazy year it has been, uh, but we're super excited for that. If you don't feel comfortable being in person, we have online options as well, which will be incredible. Uh, so wherever you find yourself, we would just love to see you, uh, to connect with you and your families. Uh, we'll, we'll be there and uh, yeah, we'll, your leaders will be there, all the things. But um, we're excited for tonight because we have a guest speaker here tonight. She's not really a guest, she's one of us uh, here at Fellowship. Is one of our very own pastors on staff, Rachel Ceballos, uh, who is our Youth Summit speaker, uh, who has come back so graciously to encourage you one more time uh, because that is her heart. Uh, she is one of the biggest encouragers uh, and she sees you all. She sees like how hard this year has been uh, on our young people. And so she's just here for you and wants to encourage you. God has given her a word. Let me tell you that. So uh, super excited for tonight. We got uh, life groups after that at 730 uh, on Zoom. We'd love for you to join us. And then uh, and we're going to be worshiping together in a few moments here. So uh, we're going to sing a song um, called What a Beautiful Name. And we want to lift up the name of Jesus wherever you find yourself. So in the midst of all the uh, challenging circumstances you find yourself in, in the midst of the division, the, the uh, unrest, um, the uncertainty, uh, the confusion, the unknown, uh, in the midst of everything going on, we can lift up the name of Jesus. And that name of Jesus has so much power. So tonight, wherever you find yourself, my encouragement to you would be this, lean in. Uh, God is doing something big uh, and wants to, do, wants to work in your life. Uh, so wherever you find yourself, in the midst of all your circumstances, in the midst of your day today, let's lift up the name of Jesus together. Daniel, I'm gonna pass it over to you. Uh, lead us in a time of worship. Uh, let's lift up the name of Jesus together.
What a wonderful name it is Nothing compares to this What a wonderful name it is The name of Jesus Cause death could not hold you The veil tore before you Silence the boast of sin and grave The heavens are roaring The praise of your glory For you are raised to life again You have no rival You have no now and forever, God, you reign. For yours is the kingdom, yours is the glory, yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is, what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful Jesus, there is power in the name of Jesus, there is power in the name of Jesus, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Yes, there is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. I hear the chains falling. Sing, I hear, I hear the chains falling. Yes, Lord, I hear, I hear. I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains. I hear the chains falling. Yes, God. I hear the chains falling. Chains. Silence the boast of sin and grave. And the heavens are roaring, praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again. And you have no rival, and you have no now and forever, God, you reign. For 
Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. Yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name. Nothing can say it again. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. Yes. Powerful name. Fellowship Youth at Home. Welcome. My name is Rachel Ceballos. I'm one of the pastors here on staff at Fellowship, and it's really, really good to be back with you guys. Um, I'm excited tonight that we are continuing in James. We're going to be in James chapter three tonight. So if you have your Bibles, grab them out. If you have it on your phone, cue it up. Um, We're talking about taming the tongue tonight. And ultimately, we're talking about what are you saying? What are you saying with your life? It says that, I've seen this, 7,000 words a day. That's what we speak. 7,000 words a day. I probably do around 10,000. Maybe you do a little bit less. But that's a lot of words. It's a lot of things how many words do we text or write in emails or send in DMs? It's probably even more. And right now, when we think of this past year where we might have felt isolated and alone, words are really important. Messages sent by people who love you, right? When you get that message that someone's thinking about you or cares for you, right? It it hits different. When You hear those dread words, we need to talk. Oh, that's the worst, right? Like, have you ever gotten that? Like a text, hey, we need to talk. And you just think, oh, this is it. This is the end. Words have power. Words can either bless or curse. Words bring life or they bring death. Literally, it says in here in the Bible, Words can be like water, like a source of life, or they can be poison. In James chapter 3, it's all about taming the tongue. Ultimately, taming your mouth and what comes out of it. There's imagery used of a ship, a giant ship sailing on the sea. And it's moved literally by a small rudder just this little piece in the back can turn a ship to go left or right in any which direction. It's that small rudder that makes those movements. It talks about a horse, how you can take a wild stallion and put a bit in its mouth. And with that small piece, you're able to control and move this giant, magnificent beast that we have to know as Christians, as people of God, as whoever you are right now watching this, that your words have an influence and almost like a life of their own. That we see people out in the world who may say something one time and it can affect them for years to come. It is a weighty responsibility on each one of us to ultimately bring life instead of death. I'm going to read in James chapter three, verse nine. So verse nine, it says that with the tongue, we praise our Lord and father. And with it, we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, 
this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Your words, they come from the heart, right? That's what God's word is telling us, that from your heart, it's going to tell me a lot about where you are. In Luke chapter 6, verse 45, another verse, it says it like this, the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. And I imagine for many of you watching, I just keep trying to think about where you are right now. What is your heart experiencing? And are you saying words that reflect that? Maybe it's been a really hard year, right? And so you just haven't been that kind. It's been hard for you to reach out or talk to people Or maybe it's just been an isolating year and it feels hard to say the things that you need. Or you've been in pain. And we all know that saying that hurting people hurt other people. But if you were to imagine the words that you say as a piece of fruit, would it be a healthy piece of fruit? Would it be vibrant? and joyful, and you would want to be around that piece of fruit? Or would it be a piece of fruit that's been pretty bruised, a bit rotten? I think that there's grace in understanding this. God knows our hearts. He can see them for exactly what they are, but he wants nothing more than to redeem us to restore us, to heal us. That our words have power, our words can bring death or a life, but ultimately he's looking at our hearts. He wants to get to the root of it, to say, I want to see you and know that even though you've been speaking poison or even though you've been pushing everyone away or you've been... (laughs) Writing DMs. Can I just say this for a second? Texting, DMs, everything on social media. Isn't it wild how like you're like, I would never say something to somebody so hurtful or so mean the way that I can in a text message. There's like a false bravery to it, right? That you're like, this person did this or or gossip. Oh my gosh, gossip's a part of this too. Like, The things that we write about other people on a DM or a text, we we would never say to their face. Or the words that we sometimes speak about ourselves. I think about the internal dialogue of why are there things that I would say about myself, I would also never say to another human being or believe that. We have to be people that speak life. And let me say this. It doesn't come by our own power. It doesn't come by our own strength. When we think about having a heart after God, it's because we've given him the poison. We've given him the hurt, the pain, the separation, the things that people have said about us. We give him our most broken pieces and he promises to make it whole. But many times when we've stopped doing that, when we've relied on our own power, when we think I can do it on my own, then we begin to notice the fruit of our life is not so so healthy anymore. We recognize that we're more like salty old water that just doesn't do anything, kills plants rather than being a spring of water, of words of life. If you were to review right now all of those things, all of the words, all of the things you write down, where are you right now? Where is your heart? And you need to turn it back to him. 
I think about how do you talk to your family? This is kind of a telling one, and it's hard. I'm not going to say like family relationships. I know. And I'm not saying if there are people in your life who are really unhealthy, I'm not telling you to put those people back in your life. But if the people that you love the most and you you say the harshest things to them, it might be telling you that you need to spend some time with Jesus. If our first response to everything is a curse instead of a blessing, maybe tonight you need to talk to someone here. Talk to your leader. Talk to one of the pastors and say, I need to get right. Like my tongue, my mouth is out of whack. And it's telling me that my heart's out of whack. I need to, I need to, I need to get it fixed. <laughs> and that's the first step. Because Jesus takes us just as we are. And when you have a heart that's been changed, so begins the process of taming the tongue. And you know what you become? You become a truth teller, truth rooted in love. You become a prophet, someone who speaks about the future hope, about the current hope, about how good God is. You begin telling other people encouragement. You become the person that others want to be around because you see the best in people and that's what you speak You begin changing the habits of gossip where it isn't about what this other person did or did you hear this? You aren't building false relationship based on something that you heard about someone else. Instead, you're the kind of person who's speaking the truth and love about who people are in their best light. That even when you see something that's happening, you can say, here's how God sees this. That's a prophet. You speak like the future pastors and ministers that you are. That right now, as you're watching this, you're thinking, I can think back in my own life to the people who believe the best in me. I can think of the people who, whenever I'm down, they speak love to me. And that's what you become. You become like a spring of fresh water. You become a blessing, not a curse. Your life is not poisonous, but instead it's life bringing. That's the heart of God. That's the heart that he's renewing and restoring in you so that everything you say and everything that you touch, it speaks of the kingdom of God. And let me just say this. This world is broken. There are people who have hurt you, I know. There are people who have said things about you. That's why that hits. And Jesus tells us that he's going to restore it, that he's restoring it now, that there is a healing that happens in this world when the kingdom, the present hope of Jesus touches it. But he uses us first, right? He heals our hearts so that we get to join in to that life-giving, restoring hope that our mouths become the mouth of God, the mouthpieces that get to speak that way. And so people see more of Jesus through you, that the painful, hurting places in you become restored. And so even the darkest moments we can share how God pulled us out of that. And there's hope. I think of high school students, you, who are back on your campuses maybe, or you're still in Zoom classes, and how needed are words of hope right now. And not fake hope. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about the kind of people who are like, everything's so good. No, no, no. Because real love tells the truth. But isn't it powerful when you hear people who say this happened? This was painful. This hurt. But I found hope in the midst of it. And here's how God is healing me. 
here's how God is restoring me. And you begin to share those stories, the real life moments, there's healing in that. I guess I have a couple questions for you. It's what's your source? If your source is yourself and you rely only on yourself, <laughs> I've been there, guaranteed it's not pretty. My own strength, uh, I'll turn to gossip. I'll turn to pain. I'll turn to things that are of this world that are broken and hurting. But when I tap into who Jesus is and I remember his words, the way he speaks love over me, the way he speaks forgiveness over me, and his heart is my heart, it puts my tongue in check. It gives me better perspective. It allows me to see the best even in people who are just hard. Your source has to be him. But right now, what's your true source? Where is your heart before him? The next question is, where do you need healing? Where in your life right now does it feel like it's just poison? Where in your life have you been speaking death into others' lives? And maybe there's some people that you need to ask for forgiveness because the words have been so harsh. Or maybe there's people who have said such terrible things about you. Their words have felt like poison in your life. Where do you need to forgive? Maybe there's some DMs or some text messages you just need to cut out. There's relationships right now that are just too broken. And the things that you're saying or the things you're doing are not bringing life. And right now, when you think about this and you think about your heart being turned to Jesus, where can you be a prophet? Where can you be a pastor? Where can you be a person that is speaking future hope and life into others? I, I know that this is not the easiest thing to talk about, to talk about your very heart, the very pain in your life. But can you imagine that it's life abundant? And that's what I'm praying for you. Here's the test. What in your life is bringing life and what in your life is bringing death can you be it literally says here can you be both fresh water and salt water flowing from the same spring you can't god is asking to renew your heart to renew the source to be a place of freedom of hope of restoration of healing I'm going to pray for us um, right now. And I know you're going to spend some time talking to some other people. You're going to have some time to reflect. But right now, can you think, do you have a heart after God? What are you saying with your life? Our only hope is Jesus. Jesus. This world will pass. These things, they do not last. But it is his love and his presence that is eternal. He's the source. Let me pray for you right now. Lord God, I thank you so much for these students. I thank you for the way that you are working in their lives even right now in this moment. And Lord, I know that that so many times we've said things that don't bless you, Lord. We have done things that have brought death, Lord. We have been people that um, have lived two different lives almost. But I pray right now, Lord, for the restoration, Lord, of our hearts. That we would turn back to you, Lord. That we would allow our lives to be like a spring of fresh water. That your Holy Spirit would work through us and in us. 
and that you would change us, Lord, change us to have a heart like yours. I thank you for the knowledge that we can see the fruit in our lives, Lord, and we want it to be healthy. We want it to be hopeful, to be restorative. Lord, help us to see with your eyes, to be your hands and feet, Lord, and to speak life, Lord, to speak you. I thank you for this time. Um, Restore and renew us, Lord. We just ask this in your name. Amen. Thanks for letting me be here with you and um, blessings and joy to you. And I'll see you someday soon.